Let's consider again linear predictors or the hypothesis space constituted by linear predictor function, functions which are of the form uh, as a weighted, a weighted sum of the individual features using some weights. And the weights can be stacked conveniently into a weight vector, which is of the same dimension as the feature vector. So the feature vector contains the individual features of a data point. And let's represent this linear predictor in a graphic way. So we assign each feature a node. So x1 is a node, x2 is a node, up to xn. It's represented by a node. And this weighted linear combination will represent by a summation point, which is fed by the weighted features. So each feature is weighted by some weight, which we indicate on the link from the feature node to the summation, Wn. And then we output the weighted sum as the output or the predicted label. And although this space of linear predictors is very useful in many applications, in some, in some applications we need to be able to represent nonlinear non predictor functions. So the relation between the features and the predicted label or the label is nonlinear. And for this we need to extend or expand this hypothesis space of linear predictors. And one way to do this is just adding here or applying to this weighted sum a nonlinearity. And this nonlinearity we denote by a function g. And this is called activation function. There are different choices used in machine learning methods for this activation function, but let's, for the sake of the argument, focus on one particular choice for this nonlinear activation function. So this activation function takes the input, which is in this case the weighted sum of the features, and produces a nonlinear function. So here we take zero, and for positive values, g of c equals c, if c is larger or equal than zero, and for negative arguments, g of c is zero. And this function is sometimes referred to as rectified linear unit. or RELU for short. And then we use this output of this rectified linear unit as the predicted label. Whereas this simple mapping now, so just combining a linear predictor with this activation function does not give us much more power in, in the representation abilities. However, the key idea behind methods referred to as deep learning, which is one of the most vibrant threads within machine learning is to take this unit as the basic building block and combine them to build 
much larger artificial neural networks. So we obtain an artificial neural network by using several layers with activation functions. So we have here the input layer, which are just the features. Then we have the first hidden layer with several summation and activation functions. And all these are connected by weighted links. So this each link here carries one weight which we can adapt. And then we can add another layer. So this is one layer. Then we can add another layer which consists of the same units. So summations followed by activation functions. And these are connected with the previous layer again via weighted links. And these weighted links carry weights which we can adapt, which we can tune or learn based on data and so on and so forth. So we can, in principle, we can connect any output of the first layer to any of the summation units in the next layer, which is then called fully connected. So this here would be the second layer. And at some point we sum up all the outputs from a layer and feed it again to a nonlinearity, maybe the same activation function, and obtain an output which is the predicted label. So this whole structure here is again similar to decision trees, a flow diagram representation of a mapping. So we have the input feature vector and this whole diagram represents a map, a mapping or a function, a predictor map which outputs a predicted label. And each map here, or each possible choice for these weights, so this can have numbers, so this could be one, this could be three, this could be two, each possible choice for these weights corresponds or results in one particular mapping h of x. And if we vary these weights, we trace out a set of predictor maps, which is a Particular, a particular construction of a hypothesis space. So we end up with a hypothesis space where each element of this hypothesis space is a predictor map that is implemented by an artificial neural network with particular choices for the weights. And it turns out that using large enough networks with many hidden layers and many uh, units in each layer, we can represent almost arbitrary non-linear functions. So instead of uh, linear functions, only linear functions, we can represent very non-linear, highly irregular functions using uh, artificial neural networks. And this is one of the reasons for the success of deep learning methods, because they use very big artificial neural networks to represent highly nonlinear uh, predictor maps and the resulting hypothesis space is large and allows therefore allows to uh, obtain highly accurate predictors which can predict uh, labels in very challenging machine learning applications.